And there we are on the record. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Speaker Pro Blab. Um, I'm super excited about today, and I mean that. I say that in the beginning of every one. But I have been trying to find speakers that could speak to speakers' bureaus for about four months, and it's been a hard find. So in other words, you know, I wanted to sit down with, with people like the two of you to talk about bureaus how they benefit you, how you become involved, do they always benefit a speaker, so on and so forth. So for those of you that are here, welcome everybody. I'm going to introduce uh, my lovely ladies to you. This is Laron Starr. I'm going to point at her. There, there <laughs> right she's waving. Here. No, that's the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's wrong to you. It's right to me. So there. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Laurent will empower you, provoke you, and change the way you think about speaking. She's an innovative expert in gen generational leadership. Ooh, and yeah, empowerment. She's been featured in Forbes, Huffington Post, and several trade magazines around her best-selling work, Your Power Pivot, and soon to come, Pivotal Generation. And Laurent will help you go from surviving to thriving in today's speaking world. So type your website in the comments. Welcome, Laurent. And while you're typing that, I'm going to introduce, am I pointing right to Shia? No, that's right. <laughs> to Shia Shaw is a powerful storyteller. <laughs> And a victorious survivor of sex traffic, sex trafficking, demystifying misconceptions about who is at risk for sexual violence. Uh, just amazing. Toshia founded Purple Wings, the Purple Wings organization. She will probably talk a little bit about that today. Um, it's a mentoring agency for at-risk girls in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's where she's coming to us from. Um, Lauren is coming to us from New Hampshire. She's also a motivational life coach who specializes in trauma healing and releasing those limiting beliefs that hold you back from reaching personal success. I always forget to introduce me, so I'm not gonna remember, I'm gonna do this today. I am Jolene Moody, I am a blogger, I am a writer, I am a speaker. And when I'm not on stage speaking, I'm off stage teaching entrepreneurs and other speakers like you how to find and create paid opportunities and how to expertly close clients from those rooms with integrity so that you work less and earn more. So let's dig in. Yeah. So um, let's start with, I mean, we're going to start pretty basic and I know it'll bounce around everywhere. Welcome to everybody that's here. Please share it on Facebook or Twitter if you can, and we'll get more people in the room. And I'm going to start with you, Laron. Um, tell me about the speakers bureaus you belong to. We'll start with that and how you came to be a member of those bureaus. So my audience uh, ranges anywhere from women's conferences women and then the financial and insurance industry and I belong to two speaker bureaus and I joined them in large part so if you're out there and you want to be a keynote speaker at a women's conference you must have a bureau behind you mm -hmm. or you will be a breakout and I don't do breakout workshops it's just not my forte um, so I had to join a speakers bureau for that reason. Uh, and then for the financial and insurance industry, because there's so many legal nuances to that industry, I had to join a bureau as well there that already had the connections in place. I don't have the connections in the financial industry or I didn't at that time. So when you joined the bureau and Tashia, I neglected to tell you to put in your website. I'm so sorry. Oh, I so go ahead in. and do that. Oh, you it's did? In. Yes. yes I mean, you you ignore my it. comment because <laughs> clearly I'm not paying any attention. <laughs> Please explain, yeah, I was about to ask that. Um, please explain that, Laron, we need a speaker's bureau to speak at conferences. What does that wow. mean? Sure, absolutely. So for women's conferences, now I'm speaking just women's conferences, to be a keynote speaker, they typically go for the celebrities. Uh, mm -hmm. They tend to hire those that are on ABC, Good Morning America, The mm -hmm. Today Show. Um, they're not, the mainstream that us speakers typically go through, we get booked for workshops. Or breakout mm -hmm. sessions, so which typically for breakout aren't paid. sessions, yeah. yes, which typically aren't paid, or it's paid five hundred dollars. And I, I mm -hmm. I'm sorry, um, <laughs> time is limited. You either pay my fee, or yeah, it's just not happening. No. Um, so I had bumped into uh, a celebrity, Lisa Gibbons, and she was speaking at a conference. And I said, "What the hell?" I'll be quite honest with you, Lisa. I, I like you, but I'm a better speaker than you. Right? God forbid I don't put it right, but. I am. I have a more impactful met. Like, yeah, I was like, I, yeah, other than the celeb status, how the hell are you getting these? And she hooked me up with her speaker's bureau. Wow. Because I was that direct. See, I, I love got, that. I have to just jump I in here. I'm tired of, go ahead. That's, that's powerful that you had the um, kahunas 
to actually step up to someone like that. Because the truth is, the truth is in order to get those big giant keynotes, I always say you have to be a celebrity. You have to be like the top in in your industry or you have to face some sort of adversity. I Um, have all my legs. Like the guy who landed the plane. I always use him as the example. I haven't eaten anybody. (laughs) I mean, right. And, and, uh, you know, one of the associations I used to belong to, you know, my girlfriends and I, my mastermind and I, we crack up, we joke about it all the time. I'm like, I have all my legs. I have two eyes, two ears. I have normal equipment that's all functioning. Like I don't have anything. I didn't climb Mount Everest, nor do I want to. Mm. Um, So for me to be a keynote speaker in the women's conference arena, I need somebody that's going to push me there. Mm -hmm. And And this is a great place to divot, if if you don't mind, down to Toshia. Because as we mentioned in your introduction, you faced some serious adversity. Mm -hmm. And and I would not have gotten the, I would not be represented, I believe. Uh, just off of what I do without that adversity. So that was my stepping stone to get out there and do what I love. I've always loved entertaining and speaking, climbing on stages. I can talk to you both to death. So (laughs) so I have, you know, I have a lot to share. I have a lot of value to give women, not only because of what I've gone through, but I just got a lot to tell people and it is a value. And so I knew that I needed to use that as leverage to get to where I want uh, to be. And it's quite sad because I've met a lot of women who have some juicy stories and it's not all about facing adversity, but they have value. Like Lauren, you know, they have value and they need to get on stage and be seen so people can learn from them. But if they're not represented by a speakers bureau, we won't hear from them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And there's, you know, there's a, to, to what you were just talking about, there's a lot of speakers out there that, you know, if you if you pick up my book, the first <laughs> chapter is junk in your trunk, where I talk about my adversity, which will make your skin crawl. But I'm not going to speak about that on a keynote because that's just, it's in right. my book. But other than that, it's too emotional for the audience to handle. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's where the speaker bureaus, especially for women's conferences, if you want a keynote, you have mm-hmm. got you have got to have that speakers bureau. Otherwise, take the workshops, and I will gladly give you those workshops because I'm not doing them. <laughs> Narelle was Narelle, weren't you on the blab that I did two weeks ago with speakers agents? Narelle has a great question. Um, a few weeks ago, I did a blab on speakers agents, mm. and she yeah, I thought you were. That's where we met. Um, So she's asking this question, what's the difference between speakers bureaus and a speaker's agent? And either one of you can grab that and then bounce off the other. I have both. Mm -hmm. So they are very, very different. So a speaker's bureau um, is someone who represents represents me with their clients, um, but they also represent four or five other speakers. So a talk will come in, a fide- you know, a company will reach in and say, mm-hmm. we're looking for an expert on generational inclusion. And the speaker bureau will say, I've got four people that can speak to that. A speaker agent, on the other hand, is someone who works solely for me, or at least my speaker is an agent, works solely for me. She goes after the gigs that I want her to go after. I reach out to her and I say, these are the 10 programs I want to keynote at. Go. And she doesn't get paid until she gets me those gigs. Oh, wow. So which is a great question. Um, and I'm sure that, Narelle, this would be interesting to note, too. If you, because I am represented solely by the Bureau. I have not sought an agent yet. I'm in the, I'm doing that right now because, and that's something we need to get into because I'm trying to break out of my box um, that they have put me in because that one Bureau is only representing that, that portion of me. So they had to go back to the drawing board this month and figure out, okay, how do we pull her out of this box? Um, So will the agent and the speakers bureau have to share commission from you and that gig, whatever gig they get? Whoever gets me the gig gets the commission end of the story. So they're not not working. They don't don't work together. They Mm. don't work together. So I know for my financial gigs, my insurance gigs, it is purely through my speaker bureau. Okay. Um, everything else goes through my agent. Love it. You know, and then the women's conferences is kind of on top of that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. 
but they, so don't, she, they do just not so, share. So for your, your um, I'm going to put my website in here, a little shameless self-promotion. If you go to, um, I have a section called Aspiring Speakers. Yeah. And I upload, like this will also be uploaded on my website. The blab we did two weeks ago that speaks directly to speakers agents. I had two guests that were both speakers agents. Listen to that. And that will help you step in and get on track with how to utilize a speaker's agent. Okay. Um, I want to I want to stay in, in line with Speakers Bureau, so we're right on topic. Right, right, right. And so, yeah. So when we think about Speakers Bureaus, I know that they have regional bureaus. I know that they have mm -hmm. national bureaus. And either one of you, again, can pick up on this and the second can chime in. When a speaker is searching for a bureau, what do they need? What kind of experience do they need? What kind of marketing materials do they need? <laughs> and go. <laughs> You need Alice White, Alicia White in your corner. <laughs> She'll create everything for you, and you're good to go. Start the crap out, right? Yeah. Um, I know. For me, I had to. <laughs> I had a video showing my TED talk. That's where all of this sprung from. So oh. I did a TED talk, TEDx talk. I wish it was just a TED talk, but the TEDx talk locally here in Vegas um, back in 2013. And I go, you know, if, if I'm going to put it all out there, I might as well get paid for it. Sure thing. Because for me, you know, when a woman or a man, whomever, if they survive some type of trauma and they climb up on the stage, you know, of course we want to empower, educate people, but you don't want to get further exploited. And that's what I find a lot of, you know, places do they just exploit you because you got all this good information and you're willing to share, 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 but you can get worn out from doing all this sharing without getting paid. Mm -hmm. So I knew I had a product that was polished. And so I had to query my agent and include this TEDx talk so they can watch it and see if they were interested in. So you already had an agent. agent. A oh, not agent. agent. I'm sorry. The bureau. The bureau. Okay. I'm sorry. Start over. Go ahead. <laughs> so, right, the, right. So, for me, I had to query. I, I hope I'm answering this question. What do they need from you? I needed to have some type of product to show them that I was worthy of their time and efforts to get me these gigs and that they could get paid for me. Because how, they learn, special, how did you right? learn about this bureau? Did someone tell oh, you word about of it? Mouth. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. My mentor. Um, she doesn't think she's my mentor, but she is. Hi, girl. So, <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> um, yeah, Alexia Vernon is awesome sauce. Uh, she's been featured in so many, oh my God, so much stuff. And she's just a, a guru and helping you polish your talk, your TED Talk, uh, public speaking. So as the universe would have it, we, we met and she... I tried out for Ted and she saw that and then our our relationship continued and she said you really need to look for an agency or something you know cuz you could really go far with this TEDx talk. Mm -hmm. And I did. Yeah. So you reached out then you um, you had your video, you had your materials, they liked you. Tell me a little bit and then we'll go to you Lauren, I'm sorry. Tell me a little bit about um, what was the time gap from when they chose to represent you? Did you have oh, to pay man. anything? And then when you got your gig? But I realize this is different for everybody. Uh, Hell no. no. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a speaker bureau that's asking for money, run away. Oh, no, that's not what I meant. I agree with you on that. What I meant was, oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. There's a lot of bureaus out there that do ask for money or they take they take a commission. Oh yeah, they take a commission. They yes. take a commission. They how do. How long? Take a how long before Tashia and I? We it did not take it, it. It probably was maybe a week or so that I heard from them. I <laughs> submitted my information. Said, I think you want to represent me. <laughs> I think that you know I could add value to your agency, and uh, we can make make money if we go in this together. And she wrote back, "I think you're right. I well, like Ron, that. you said." <laughs> Run if they want money. Run. Talk yeah, to me about so, um, Yeah, so I'm fine. Like the, the Speaker Bureau, if they get me a gig, they get 25 to 33%. That's that's industry standard. But I think we need to step back a little bit sure. um, when we're talking about what, right? So if you're sitting there and you go, gee, I want to be, you know, I want to belong to a Speaker Bureau, there's a couple of things you need to look at nationally mm -hmm. or regionally. Regionally, mm -hmm. if you don't want to travel, if you want to travel, you've got to go with a national firm. Mm -hmm. Right. The national firm has a bigger reach. 
Right. Um, you also want to take a look at how, what's the competition in your niche, in yes. your talk perspective. So I do generational inclusion. So when, and I, and for the financial and insurance and corporate industry, the first thing I looked at is who else is in that niche in that bureau? Because I don't want to compete against 40 other people. I only want to compete against one or two because it is competition. Oh, wow. Okay, there you are. Did we lose you, Jolene? I'll still be right back. Um, and then the, the other side to that um, is as far as your material goes, your marketing material says it all. You have got to have, right now, if you've had a TED Talk, great. You've mm -hmm. got an instant video. Mm -hmm. um, however, yeah, to play devil's advocate, TED Talks, yeah. TEDx Talks are not seen in the corporate world, the financial world. I, I'm, what I'm hearing is the flip side to that is that they're not as mm -hmm. relevant um, as far as a speaker's mm. demo reel goes. So if you're going to if you're going to um, post you know post out there your videos, the speaker bureau wants yeah. phenomenal videos, and you're going to have to shovel out the money anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars to make sure yeah. your website lines up, your videos line up, it, your marketing well, you is have up to, to par. I, I, I'm is, sorry, is, I don't You know, is the speaker bureau is not, not for everybody. It yeah, takes so time I, to I get don't there. want people. Think that to get just uh, look, guys. My mentor is there. Hi, Alexia. <laughs> yeah, you're my mentor. So anyway, um, I don't want people to think that. Oh, all I have to do is go and submit a video, and I'll find a bureau too. That's not true. You know what I mean? It, but I know that this TEDx talk was polished, and the person that polished me is right there. And if you have any questions for her, she probably needs to dial in with this open seat. But um absolutely like you have to have your market my website was done everything you know lined up to yeah. where they looked at the video then they want to see how my social media is i'm sure if i only had one or two followers they would not be interested but i have a sizable following um so i had a bit of a little small fan base if you will already going on um and so they saw something that I did some of the work because you have to do some of the work. If your marketing isn't up to par yeah. and you just submit some type of YouTube part. video, it's not, not going to work. No, it's not going to. And, and you've got to have the, you, you know, you have to have the credibility as well. I hear this from a lot of speakers out there that play in right. the leadership market. And, you know, a speaker bureau is going to yeah. ask, who have you led? Yeah. What's your degree in? And I cannot tell you how many speakers I bump into that are like, I'm a and leadership what, right? expert. And I'm like, who have you led? <laughs> Myself. Okay. And what's your degree in? Uh, Sports science. Well, you go, girl. You go. You take that message to a workshop. Have fun with that. Um, as far as your own, oh, Ravel had asked, uh, Ravel asked a question, if it's your own story, how can it compete with mm. others? Ravel, you have to remember yes. that you're being put in a box in a bureau. Yes. You're falling into women's mm -hmm. empowerment, leadership, business, mm -hmm. health and wellness. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what your story is. Yeah, it, yes, it's your story, but you're competing with others that have other stories that might be more compelling than yours, uh -huh. like climbing right. Mount Everest with one arm. I'm in there with I'm, I'm <laughs> up against famous and like writers. We're talking about writers that we that we learned about in grade school. Oh. I mean, that's what I'm talking about, you know. So you better have something very dynamic that can go up against these people. And and also, I need people to understand that sometimes we can get someone will be interested in hiring you, and that's where people think. Uh, I'm and trying to get this out because it's coming, it's rushing uh, in. When I was ignorant to the fact that I did have to compete, you know, people were interested. Oh, they send an email. They, they're they interested. Let me send them to my bureau. But it could take somewhere from one to three months. And you might be up against four other speakers from nationwide or even worldwide. And uh, during that time, they're watching you on social media and everywhere to make sure that you're a good fit for what they're trying to do. I'm telling you, look at Lauren. <laughs> I'm reading. I'm re I'm reading the next question. How good is funny in your talk? I'm like, yeah. Don't I think it's very asking. good. I think she. I'm a comedian. I don't. I don't bill myself as a comedic speaker, but I I put a lot of wit into yeah. it. Yeah. 
And I get a lot of, a lot of laughs. Yeah. Is it good to be funny? Absolutely. I know. Hell yeah. Uh, is it good to be funny? Uh, <laughs> people love laughter. It, but but you know what? Yeah. Narelle, it, what's more important yes. is impactful. If you can show impact, whether it's mm. through comedy, whether, I mean, I sing, I dance, I laugh, I, I'm real, I'm vulnerable. I mean, there's so many things that go in. Mm -hmm. If you can be you, but just what you'll you get said about again. the vulnerability, and, and even though my talk is heavy as hell, one minute you're weeping and the next minute you're cracking up because I don't take myself so seriously. I don't want anybody to slip the damn wrist from leaving from my talk. I'm just saying, you know, I want to be uplifted in each other. Come to my talk and you know, I don't know if it, it depends on who wants. Yeah. Some people don't want funny. That's you know, right. They'll tell some you. Some people I mean. ask for it. I did a yeah, talk in October and she made it very clear to me that she wanted funny. And in my reel, there's moments that I included it intentionally where you can hear the audience laughing. Okay, and I put yeah. these silly little things in that I say. Mm -hmm. And it's part, but I don't, I never build myself as a comedic speaker because then I feel like I'm putting an awful lot of pressure yeah. on myself because <laughs> I'm not a comedic speaker. I'm not That's a comedian. Right. <laughs> I'm a funny chick, but I'm afraid because I did actually bomb a talk. By attempting to do that, and that was the universe going. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -mm. yeah. So um, anyway, if you do, if you have questions, and Ravel said this, do do type in the the slash in the queue, so no space between, so everyone can see the question, and I don't miss them when they pop up. Um, Lauren, we were segueing, and you backed us up, and then we were we're gonna roll back fast forward, and I forgot to what. Do you remember? I asked you a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have my pen and paper next to me. So. <laughs> but you know what? I will say, I will say on a side note, when you work yeah. with a speaker bureau, uh, the two that I work with, I treat them like gold. Um, if I have speaking things come in that I know are heavy dollars, um, I send them right to my, I will refer. So someone had asked if I land the gig on my own, do I get paid 100%? Yes. But more often than not, not when someone reaches out to me directly and says, "Hey, we're thinking about booking you for this," I will right. send them right yeah. to my bureau. Right, because it is a it That's is a right. partnership where right. you know it's an open dialogue, and I want them sitting back on, "Oh crap, Loran Star, you know she refers to us all the time. Of course, yeah, she's the first person that we're going to think mm -hmm. of." And you know, the first person that's got, they're going to go, oh, well, what about and this And it's a trust what factor, that too. Talk? You want them to trust you, and you can't be over here booking. Like, it's stipulating your contract. If they get, you have to make sure, if you don't want them to get any of your money, you have to put that in the contract. That if I go out and secure gigs on my own, that you guys don't yeah. get a dime. Okay, because they will. Yeah. And they do a ton, yeah, they, that international question, question around, yes, they do a ton of international gigs. My international, I'm an international speaker because I go to <laughs> I Canada. That. Yay, it counts. I, I, I just, I just got something across my desk this morning for Hong Kong. I was oh, like, wow, oh, really? No. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, I can't. Right. Yeah. I mean, to each his own. I no. think that would be pretty cool. I want to go to Australia, maybe yeah. London. Yeah, I'll I refer somebody right. else to that. Which is how, which is a great way to, I can't, <laughs> I know, um, which is a great way to get into, so if you're looking to get into a bureau, start networking with people that are in that bureau because nine out of 10 times, they are, they are 10 times more likely to talk to you if they've got somebody that they've worked with, you know, if, if it's an internal referral than you just sending your material because there's a gazillion speakers mm. out there and they're all sending their crap to that, that person. So <laughs> your three best friends. Thanks. I, I thought I was your BFF. Oh, the way she met whatever. But yeah, rely on that network because you know, with that Hong Kong gig that just came across my desk, that's mm -hmm. gonna go through a bureau. So now I've I'm now I'm going, all right, who do I know that can fit that that isn't already in their bureau mm -hmm. to bring them in? And that brings up a valid point. You have to be very clear on what your talk is. Yes. And I think that there's a lot of fuzzy oh, lines yeah. with that. Like if I talk to people, I'll say, Well, what is your talk based on? What do you, what could you speak to? Like Ron, you said when someone says leadership and the whole thing. Um, how how do motivationalists or inspirational speakers women's empowerment where do they fit in how do they turn that dial mm, i'm trying to understand the question 
you can't yeah you can't just fall underneath yeah, the umbrella specific. of women's empowerment yeah. When I started my, when I started speaking, I was like, women's empowerment and leadership fell underneath that. And as I wrote and became more in charge mm -hmm. of my intellectual property, it really shook out to when I do women's empowerment or women's conferences, it's about work life balance. It's about a total accountability for your own success. Mm -hmm. Period. Everything else I love that. to somebody else. Because she knows who mm -hmm. she is. Right. And you've got mm -hmm. to be willing mm -hmm. to give it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because you're only going to list that's four right. talks mm -hmm. on a bureau site. You shouldn't have yeah, more. That's great. Than that's that. good information. Mm -hmm. Too much. Do you want to tell your new BFFs Just what bureaus you belong to? Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Well, it's on my website, Jody Solomon uh, well, Speakers Bureau. Website, Jody Speakers I belong Bureau. to her. Oh, oh. <laughs> let me write that down. Oh, right, right. <laughs> no, no, I only work with two, and that's all I'll work with. That's all. So I work with Goldman in Connecticut, um, and yeah. then you've heard of them, and then I work with. Yeah. I don't belong to a bureau. Yeah. Oh. I belong to regional bureaus. Not that. Um, but I have learned to find and create my own, and that's what my books are based on: how to find your own talks, how to sell at your own talks, nice. and that that developed because I was a coach for a very very long time mm -hmm. as a business coach. So I learned how to, when I went to women's conferences, I was the breakout session speaker. Mm -hmm. And this was before I pursued keynotes. So I had to learn how to monetize from that. And so that's that's what I base my talks on. And I don't do that anymore. I've actually, my entire business model is shifting and I am moving into the land of keynotes. So there is a speaker's agent on my horizon. That's a great question that Ravel just nice. asked. She said, is it best to niche and stay with one topic or more than one. Meaning, are you believable if you have more than, oh, sorry, more than one niche? Okay, niche. there you go. Yeah, niche. Niche, definitely. You're more believable. Yeah. Niche. I, I, have, I have two topics. I do generational inclusion. Mine is What's generational topic? inclusion, by the way? What is generational inclusion, by the way? What is, right? I, I'm, all right, everybody say it. I want you all tweeting like, Laurent says generational inclusion, because I freaking <laughs> trademarked the sucker. Um, you should, that's yeah. good. Oh yeah, I'm a huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So generational inclusion is no longer segregating out Gen X, Gen Y, right. Gen Z, Gen I. It's learning the skills that you need to oh, all get cool. like that. Cool. Very nice. So yeah, definitely niche. Yeah, yeah less is more. Yeah. If is you know, niche. I remember a few years ago sitting down with a fellow coach. She was not getting business. And the reason she wasn't, and she was a speaker too, is because if you went to her website, the front page of her website, she did it all. And I said, you, 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 not only are you confusing people when they mm -hmm. come to your website, but you're not an expert in one particular arena, and that's what people need. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely a niche. Welcome, Jonathan. Welcome, Jonathan. So, but let's, you know what? I'm, I'm looking, I'm taking right over. I'm good. That, <laughs> I need a break. Let's yeah. talk about money. Let's talk about money. Because that's what it comes down to, right? Right? Because I know some people are like, oh, I've got to get a speaker bureau, and then I'll be a famous speaker. Mm -hmm. eh, not. Um, speaker bureaus only account for about 25% mm -hmm. of my business. That's it. If that, it really That's depends right. on my topic's hot. It's, oh, I love that. So, yeah, right now my topic, topic is, is hot. Everybody's on Way the bandwagon. Let's save the children. So yeah. it's hot right now, right? <laughs> right. I've got three. Somebody come save them. But absolutely. So you really need to make sure that your topic is what sure is hot and what people want to hear. Good. And you know that, and also talking about the money, make sure that you're valuing yourself. That's something I learned. And, you, and you've got to be in the dollar zone from what my experience. So in my opinion, um, if you're going to book with a speaker bureau, you are a $10,000 right. speaker, if not more. Yep. End of the story. If you cannot get $10,000 on your own for a speaking gig, big, a speaking mm -hmm. gig, you have no business being with you the have bureau. To ask for That's a great because that's mm -hmm. where they start. Earlier you said too, Nobody's while we're talking about money, this is a great, great place to plug in this question and then we'll get to um, <laughs> Darrell. You said earlier, I want to speak to this because I made the mistake some years ago to pay into a bureau. Mm. Talk to us about the mm. difference, why people need to be leery of that. Be leery of that. Mm. Speakers, right? We are, this is what I've learned. And I've been speaking for about eight years now. Um, seven to eight years, and I've worked with the Bureau now for about a year and a half. No, I did not starve mm -hmm. for those other years, but I found that speakers, mm -hmm. you guys are naive. You will buy anything, 
Right. And I say you will because I came from a business background. So I'm like the I'm sorry, I don't pay. I'm right. I don't pay squat. Um, but yeah, there's so many companies out there that are like, if you buy into if you buy into mm -hmm. if you buy into you think all of a sudden you're going to start getting gigs because we're hungry. Mm -hmm. We want to speak. Yeah. But I mean, paying, I mean, that's just yeah, like paying I mean, for modeling. Paying. You know, if someone is telling you come to the hotel and pay yeah. us, you need to run. I mean, you're going to make them money. That's right. You're still butt <laughs> ugly. Yeah. If you were, if you were gorgeous, right. We'd be you're paying sure you. Comedian. Right. I mean, seriously, <laughs> I know I should be. Rebel, there, are, it, there are there yeah. are speakers that do pay to play. There are speakers that do pay to play. I think that's I, I think it's fine to pay to play yes. when you're doing PR work and promotional to get on television. You've got to uh, radio that kind of stuff. I, I get that, but for representation, absolutely not. Um, if if somebody reaches out to you, and I'm putting this out here, right? Because I put my email in earlier. If somebody reaches out to you and says, "Hey," Give us whatever have you and we'll get you gigs. Shoot me an email and I'll hook you into a networking, like a mastermind networking group and they'll do right. it for free. Mm -hmm. And then you can buy us all lunch or dinner or wine. I mean, my first five years of speaking professionally, I jumped in, I created a mastermind of other speakers in different industries that I could learn, grow and trade crap with. And before you knew it, I was getting gigs speaking in places I never would have thought to speak in mm -hmm. and getting paid for it. There's not a need. There really isn't any reason why you should be right. paying a bureau to represent you. There are too many bureaus out there that are looking mm -hmm. for talented people. And I love mm -hmm. what you said about the modeling. That's it. If I'm going to pay to take a picture, if you're going to pay me to take pictures mm -hmm. of you as a model, right. you're not pretty right. enough. That's a really great point. Very valid. It's blunt, but it's so, real. Very valid. It's blunt, but it's <laughs> true. Well, yeah. I, I think you. I think we have to be in this situation because you nailed it earlier when you said speakers are naive. Mm -hmm. There's so much yeah. stuff out there. You know what I mean? Like I've talked to agents, for example, where um, don't bark, no, nope, no, nope, don't bark. You are you need to be silent, be silent, be silent. Okay, so I have a big dog downstairs. Um, so some speakers agents, for example, there is a fee you pay them up front, and then there's a commission. Hmm. You know, so everybody's a little bit different and you're, you're shaking your head. No, because yours, you just pay a commission to a flat commission. Yeah. So how do you, and the average rate is 25 yeah. to 33%. Mm -hmm. That's So how standard. do you, you know, for, I say you newer speakers, I guess we learned the hard way then, you know, if, if, if no one's listening to this information with you right now, there are still people out there that are paying big bucks to different agents. Well, and that's, not, that's their fault. They need to research. I mean, I'm sorry. You just have to research and you have to know your value. That's what everything, that's what everybody jumping in on the bandwagon was online, become an online entrepreneur. You can make two ten thousand dollars every month. If you pay, right. If you pay me this, then you're going to be rich. Like you really need to research who's telling you these things. I went on. I went to see the Norell just said in California, it's illegal to pay an agent anything except commission. I love that after the gig research. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, I got excited about that. I'm sorry. No, it's true though. You really need to know what you're getting yourself into. I'm the queen of figuring it out now, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, right, but I mean, I'd be lying, jo Jolene. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a sucker my well, first sure. year. Right, like Cambridge who's who's for five hundred dollars. You could be a who who. I'm like, I can be a who's who for five hundred dollars. I got a flag on my wall back here. Professional women, yeah. Uh, right, and then yeah. uh, professional women's mm -hmm. association. And I'm like, well, well wait a minute, mm -hmm. back that truck up. And then um, ISBN, right? I, I mean, I'll call wow, them out. I can ISBN. Care less. Help see me bite me, right? But ISBN, mm -hmm. run, mm -hmm. run, They'll get run. You. Because they're not going to get you. Their speakers bureau is not going to get you mm. what you think it's going to get you. They are taking your oh money and laughing at you. That's scary. Yeah. I know, right? I'm going to get a call from the attorney <laughs> from ISBN. I'll be like, yeah, right back at you. Oh, well. Yeah. But it's good to know. No, it's yeah. very valuable information to know. But yeah, you got to be careful. You just, if it, it goes back to what my crazy mom used to say, if it, it sounds too good to be true, it mm -hmm. is. Hey, you're welcome. Revel, I said her name before, wrong.
Ravel, I said Ravel. All right, so um, in the last 20 minutes that we have here, let's move Let's move a little bit into the land of, okay, so we belong to these bureaus. Yeah. You had said, Laurent, that it's only about 25% of your business to Shia. I don't know if that's the case for you. It is. How do you even determine that you're right for a bureau? Is it if you're looking to get into that larger arena of getting paid? What should your motivation be to belong to a bureau? Well, it's money. I mean, money first. Well, it's money. I, I mean, for me. Money. Sorry. I mean, I already knew. That I've always. Sorry. Yeah. I love money. Money loves me. <laughs> hey, so, I, you know, I, I always knew that I had a story. I always knew that I had an impact. I always knew that I could create awareness and educate people. And I was already doing that. You know, I, it's nothing for me to get a free trip and go speak to someone's audience. Okay. But then. Okay. It costs money, right? It costs money for you to, or it, it costs you time and energy waking up early in the morning, hopping on a plane, missing the plane, being hungry, sometimes not missing the plane, you know, missing your planes and, and stepping off a plane and going straight to a stage. Like it's a lot of work to be a speaker. They think it's so easy that you could just roll out of bed and get glamorous and go speak. Oh my God, it was such easy money. Hell no. It's hard work. And I saw that I was doing that for free. Oh, no. I said, this is hard. I need to get paid yep. for my time. And so the hard part, I think, is just trying to figure out how much you want to charge people and then standing by that yes. and not getting getting guilted because you're a woman and you're demanding this type of money. Well, I don't have a problem. And not just yeah. that. My favorite response, and it's not my favorite response at all, is but the exposure. Yeah. Oh, it triggers me. And I'm trying oh, to, you know, I'm trying, I was talking to someone not that long ago and I said, I no longer do talks for nothing. I just uh -uh. don't do it. And she said, well, the exposure. And I said, with all due respect, I'm beyond yeah. that. You know, I don't, I am yeah. not looking for exposure. I'm looking to get paid. I'm sure you're getting paid for your job mm -hmm. right now. And I need to get paid for Love mine. That. And I stand in that firmly. And, you know, I am just as guilty in the beginning. I accepted a hundred bucks for a talk. Or a hot mm -hmm. meal for a talk. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, <laughs> and, I know a lot, yep, and I know a lot of people when they, when they're leaving Toastmasters, a lot of people get the advice, and I know everybody has their opinion that says, "Go and do some talks for free." And I hear that now, and I go, "No, don't. Step out there, mm -hmm. believe in your worth. If you want to ask for money on your first talk, and I personally encourage you to do it, ask for a hundred bucks. Get what it feels like." And then see your worth and grow more into it. You know what I mean? But I don't, I just, I, I don't want people anymore to degrade what they do or not see the value of what they do. Because you're right, Tushia, it's hard work. I don't care if the talk is 20 minutes or 60 minutes. It's hard work. Yeah, ask a plumber and, and tell it for free. No, they're not going to do it. You're right. You know, and I'm going to push back a little bit here, uh, Jolene, on the, you know, see what your worth is. You're, you are going to undervalue yourself. So, I will tell you what I did, right? Because I first started out just talking for wine. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I will talk. Give me wine. Um, and then I got to a point where I was like, I only want to speak 20 times mm -hmm. a year. That's it. And three pro bono. Right. So I do three talks a year that my, my fee is given back mm -hmm. to the association. So I said, I only want to do 20 talks. And then from there, I said, but I want to make... $200,000 this year in speaking or or a million dollars or whatever your number is. And then I divided the 20 into that and I said, voila, there's my Love fee. It. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's my fee. Then I went out and, and, and I looked at sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Who can sponsor me so that I could start building up that platform? Um, when it, So for me, the speaker bureau wasn't about the money. The money was already there. The Speaker Bureau, uh, the real reason I jumped in front of the Speaker Bureau is I, I saw that celebrity we were talking about earlier, Lisa Gibbons, talk. Eh. Um, and she's a lovely person, but I was just like, like this is so impactful. Yeah, they paid for the name. And I know you got 40000 for this. Like, I'm a huh. freaking bargain. Yeah. Um, huh. Right? And I said, and, and I, I, like, as a keynoter, enough already. So that was one reason for the women's speaker uh, for Dynasty. And then for the other, I was going into a new arena. So I went from women's conferences into financial oh, and insurance. I didn't know anything about the industry other than Love what it. I read in the book. So I needed mm -hmm. a partner. So when I sat down and I looked for a speakers bureau, I had, I, I, I reached out to 15 different ones that I had allies in already and then we had phone interviews and I wanted to make sure that they got yep. me 
that they were in the same ethical atmosphere that I'm in, that they drink the same Kool-Aid that I drink. And most importantly, that when anything comes in under generation, I, I am the first yes. choice. Yes, and I dig the pro bono thing. Just want to be clear. Yeah, I do it. But I've had yeah. so many conversations with, especially oh. it's just, it becomes very frustrating as, because they don't see that a speaker should be paid or be paid adequately. They don't see it as an actual job. And it's a female right. That's very true. Yep. <laughs> if you were a male speaker, it's a totally yeah. different horse. Mm -hmm. That's a great But a female point. speaker. And, and I've gotten ballsy enough, mm -hmm. there you go, to push right back that when they're like, well, you know, our budget's only 2,500. So I'm like, well, if I had a penis, you'd find more. So yeah. pretend. I love that. And what do they <laughs> say? It's like, oh, dear God. <laughs> and usually they just crack up laughing. They're like, okay. I'm like, if you want the Loran, if you want Loran star on your stage, you will find me my fee. Because no guy no. would do it for free. No. Or a discount rate. <laughs> They won't even take the call. Homie, don't no, think so. They won't even take the call. That's right. They won't even mm -hmm. Right? I'm, I'm Lorenzo. Right. right? I just have a very <laughs> high voice. I, I don't know. I, but yeah, if it, so I think we need to we need to push back a little bit. And there's so many, right? Is everybody on here a woman? Listen up, ladies. Stop giving it away. Stop giving the milk away, damn it. Because you're hurting the rest Man. of the industry. And that, I think that just, wow. that follows Ooh. it in so that many ways. It. Don't give away the cookies, ladies. Don't give away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Speaker Sorry. Pro Lab goes porno. Oh, I love it. So many people. Come on and show That's us right. your cookies. It's so true. Um, I love that, though. I'm not going to lie. It, the motivation was the money. I guess because I had done it pro bono. Is that wrong? For so long. There's that was just wrong my, with you know, But then when you wake up and you see, you know, what's really going on in the speaker's world, you go, oh, hello. I, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Especially if they're charging. Yeah. $10,000, $15,000 for a talk that someone else wants. And they're terrible. Yes. No. Yes. Absolutely. And I've seen it too. And I think, oh my gosh. You know? Mm -hmm. So when you're talking to the different bureaus, when you were interviewing the different bureaus, how did that work? Did you reach out with a phone call? Did it start with an email? Always a warm yeah. introduction. So I would have somebody that's already in the bureau reaching and saying, oh my God, right? I can send you the template because I wrote it. Oh my God, you've got to meet Loran Starr. She will rock this oh, audience. I love it. Financial and insurance, you know, finance. Lisa Gibbons, same thing. So that went in under Lisa Gibbons' email address. Hey, You've got to meet Loran Starr. Met her at a conference that created a dialogue, mm. and boom, boom. Mine was cold. It wasn't warm. It was just cold. It wasn't warm. It was um, and so it was a cold, cold world. Uh, and so I guess she watched it, and I'm telling. I don't even think it was a full week. She was like, "Okay." I'm like, "Oh, whoa." Okay. You know that was pretty easy. You know, that was pretty. Easy. I, I don't think it'll probably be easy for a lot of people. Sure. Yeah. Sure, Someone good said, perspectives. That's yeah, a there's a few question. questions. That's Rebel great. starts with how does it work with sponsors? And then we'll go down to Narelle's question. So for sponsorship, right? I'd be lying if I say I never do workshops. Sponsorship. Oh, we She'll lost somebody back. here. Um, okay. When I do sponsorship, I, I have a sponsorship with Clinique. I have a sponsorship uh, with a handful of insurance companies in the area that they will pay for me to speak. And in doing so, the audience either gets a copy of my book or in Clinique's case, they wow, get free product. Wow, that's nice. Uh, but they will pay me the full fee. And I always try to intertwine them into my talk. So how I found my sponsors, because I'm sure that would be another question, what do I use product-wise? What do I use product-wise that mm -hmm. I know? I use Clinique. My girls use Clinique. It started a natural conversation with their marketing department. From there, I can intertwine Clinique into any type of women's empowerment Oh, that's talk. brilliant. Oh, that's brilliant. Brilliant. Um, you know, what else do I use? You know, is, is it the type of shoe I'm wearing? What else do I have with me or in my bag of tricks? Um, if I'm speaking to a group of women in Connecticut, which is the insurance capital, I reach out to my insurance friends and say, hey, who wants to sponsor mm -hmm. me? And how do you know what, how do you know because what to they ask get, for? Do you have, is it different every time? No, that's ten thousand. Mm -hmm. That's I, right. I I can't be bothered with the numbers, and 
Narelle asked about fee or no, uh, fee of traveling. So it's 10,000 flat or 15 with travel and all expenses. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's like option A, yes. option B. Yes. yes. Uh, we're so sad you disappeared. I'm so sorry. Thank God you're back. <laughs> I was scared out of my mind. Glad you're back. Um, do you, <laughs> show's over now. Thanks for joining us. Thanks now. for calling. Um, do you use sponsors at all to show? I do not. Well, I have to take that back. If I if I am booking something on my own, yes. Um, mm -hmm. With the bureau, they handle everything, and um, and I'm so glad because I <laughs> I hate trying to do it on my own. I hate uh, hearing their sob stories about their budget. I hate having to try to figure out which airline and explain to them why I will only take one or two types of air different airlines. Um, what I need, like, I don't want to deal with all that. Just mm. go to my bureau, let them handle it. And honestly, if you can't go to the bureau and deal with that, then, oh, well, I'm just not the person for you. I, I just don't like, because all the stuff that I have to do day to day, I don't want to deal with the travel and all the rest of the realities. So then the bureau then, when, and, and then I'm just going to Narelle here, do you include expenses in your fee, for example, she only flies business class or international. How do you negotiate that? Or how does the bureau negotiate that? Mm -hmm. Flat fee. Travel is flat fee with most people. So with most bureaus, you'll si you will sign a contract that says your speaking fee is $10,000 with $1,500 mm -hmm. for travel. And that's they right. handle all of that. They bill out all of that. But that's the budget, which means if I can, for $1,500, if I can fly It's very first different class, for agents, too. Agents find themselves negotiating, and I don't blame mm -hmm. you, Tashia. For years, I've been finding my own gigs, and it's oh, wow. exhausting. It's, yeah, it's exhausting. It is. The negotiating, the, the same thing, hearing the sob stories. We're a non organization. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not, yada, yada, so on and so forth. So it gets exhausting, and I think it just shows you the different level of speakerhood you're at. You know, and you know, there's just, there's still a lot of successful speakers out there that don't use bureaus or agents at all. Oh, man, they're yeah. They're helping themselves, and they're making... Yeah. Three hundred thousand dollars a year. So it really That's depends right. on what you want. Mm -hmm. And they love it. Mm -hmm. And they're probably very, very good it. at it. Yeah. And God so bless in these last ten minutes, ladies, is there anything that I should have asked you? A point you want to make? Something I should have asked you and I didn't. Something I should. Something you think people would like to know? I want to say, you know, if you have a desire to be to become a speaker, to really get polished, please, you know. Um, even, I'm saying um. That's not allowed when you're a speaker. No. <laughs> I had a guy count my ums one time in a talk. I was pissed oh, about yeah. that. He <laughs> counted them, and I'm like, "Did you not focus on anything?" And they weren't. They weren't like um, like stopping to think. Right. But I obviously was also a wake up call. You know. So yeah, you get polished. Get a speaker. Get a coach to help you. Uh, and know what you're talking about. You know what. Is your, what are you talking about? Everyone's not a storyteller. I'm a storyteller. That's my thing. Oh. So if you hire me, you're going to get a nice story. I, I'm like Oprah. I got stories for everything. So <laughs> and make sure you know who you are because people can see through that. And if you're not comfortable on stage, mm. then you're not ready to become a speaker. You know, mm. so that's just all I want to say. Mm -hmm. Laurent? Yeah, I... I, I agree there. I think, you know, for those that are out there that are speakers, look, there is no yeah. one way to do this. Yeah. There isn't. Just because, you know, speaker bureaus work for me 25% of the time doesn't mean that that's going to be yes, part right. of your world. Um, same with topics. I think it takes a lot of, it takes a lot more work. Being a speaker takes a lot more work than <laughs> any of us realized Sorry. when we first yeah. jumped in. <laughs> It's a lot of wine, a lot of work, and it takes a Man. great network of other speakers that can help yeah. you along the way. Um, and if you feel that you want to give up, mm -hmm. then get out of the kitchen because by staying in, by keeping one foot in, it's kind of that mm. two feet jump in, either jumping with both feet or don't jump at all because it, yes. it is all time consuming Ooh. and five, 10 years from now, you'll sit back and you'll be like, oh, mm. what a waste of time trying to become this speaker that I'm just not I into. I am not this year to not travel wow. because I, I'm exhausted. Yeah. exhausted from it. Yeah. So there's, you know, different things on my plate that I'm exploring. I still get calls. I still have 
gigs that are booked and I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. You know, where five, seven yeah. years ago, I was like, you know, <laughs> 20 gigs this year, you know, and, and the whole thing. It's like, you know, I'm 43. And I know that, you know, and, and I, was, I wasn't very present on social media as much as I should have been when I started, but I was a talker like you, Laron. I wasn't afraid to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something very yeah. powerful to add. Don't let your status determine whether you should reach out or not because if you have the heart for that's it right. it will speak volumes and that's how it worked for me okay you know so just a little just my little two cents yeah you've got to you've got to push that envelope you've got to take those risks you've got to you just have to do it. And if, if you're not going to do it, then like, yeah. so get out of the kitchen. Well, I love that. My father used to say, shit or get off the pot. Forgive me, but that's just what the man yeah. said. That's true. No, but that's it. And, 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 and you know what? If you're a hobbyist speaker to my hobbyist speakers out there that are just coming out of Toastmasters and whatnot, yeah. save uh, yeah. it for the corporate I don't do gigs. corporate. Don't jump in our pool because I will tell you, it is a... It is a brutal mm. speaking world out there. And when you go against someone like myself or Jolene or Tashia here, I'm going to tell you <laughs> when you sell flat. I need her number. Right? We're going to have some wine. Right? I'm going to be like, yeah, did you really think that was going to work? Like, mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, because I'm just here to, I'm just a selfless giver. I am. I, so yeah, I hope you, I just really just want to hold, I've seen some speakers and I'm just like, oh my God. And, and it's, it's painful what? to watch because mm -hmm. it's obvious they weren't ready and they're just jumping in. And it's just like, you need to really know that you're ready before you take people's money. They're paying for that. People's money. And Absolutely. Call you out. Yeah. You know, I am like really hovering over my phone. As soon as I'm stepped off the stage, I need to know what they said. How was it? How great? Because I take it very seriously. Yeah. And I, I, that's something that I love doing. And I want to die doing that. Maybe I'll die covered over a microphone. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I definitely, I sure. in, I like you know, and so. And it's not something that you get in and, and just because you made a, a little money, maybe you made $50,000, you laying back thinking, oh, I'm good. The, the gigs will come. That's not true. It's a hustle. You got to stay on your hustle ending. because if you are quiet, they don't know that you're there. That's so you story. really have to make some noise online make and get noise. seen and network and find out, find your own gigs. Just because I learned quickly, just because I have a bureau doesn't mean they know what the hell I want to speak. You need to know where you want to speak and you need to give them. I know I'm bad at it. I have a list. Hey guys, here's my list of where I want to speak next year. Just in case you didn't see these gigs coming up, get on them. And I need to know what's happening. Every time you get a yes or no, or maybe so I want to know about it and I want to know who you spoke yeah. to. I'm on top of mind because I need my money and because I love, you know, I take it very seriously. So it's, it's, it's a big, it's a big deal. It's not something to take lightly. I love what Lauren said. It is not something to play with. And, and it's your Absolutely. reputation out there. Every time you open yeah. your mouth, it follows you. You know, I've seen, I've seen speakers that jump into speaker bureaus and then can never find oh another God. gig again. Because they mm -hmm. just weren't oh, ready. Boy. Yeah. And speaker bureaus talk to each other. They, uh, I can't tell you how many meetings I've gone to being the fly on the wall where they're like, have you, don't ever use this speaker because oh X, Y, and Z. You know, and I'm like, hey, that's me. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I mean, reputation is <laughs> it's everything. There's one, I'm very <laughs> transparent about um, a a talk that I bombed. And I think every speaker, I'm sure maybe you oh, ladies yeah. haven't yet, but I mean, I bombed this. I'm, I'm a seasoned speaker and I made mistakes that I should have known better about, but here's what I did. Not only did I give that feedback and I know a lot of speakers yeah. disagreed with it. Yeah. I gave the feedback no, I gave and I wrote I about it. That. And I write for a business magazine and I called my editor. I said, this needs to be put out there mm -hmm. because they need to yeah. know that I know that I messed up That's right. and how I messed yeah. up. And I'll tell you, the response I got from speakers was overwhelming. Oh my God, that was me. That's happened to me. I just had a, um, someone else yeah. that I've worked with. She's actually my branding expert called me. She's like, I want to die. I just bombed a talk. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So I just, that means you're seasoned. I'm, I'm like, you're in, you're good. <laughs> you know, cause it's about, you can't please everybody. Right. And I'm sure right. ladies have experienced that you're going to have audiences where they just go. <laughs> Oh, how oh, I had a lady do that to me in Rhode Island. The whole time she was just like, 
I thought I bored the hell out of her. She walked past me. She's like, you were amazing. I'm like, are you serious? See? Yeah. Yeah. Because bombing is different than That's sucking. That's a true story. Right? You can bomb, right? You can bomb a speech or a talk or a presentation. But if you're a crappy speaker and yeah. you don't no, have don't suck. that face in line, <laughs> everybody knows. Talk. You don't suck, yeah. baby girl. You don't suck. <laughs> I had so much fun today. <laughs> this was great. We're going to do this again. Ladies, type in your website one more right. time so people can visit you, play. Please, everyone in the room, follow each other. Stay connected. That's my goal with Speaker Pro is to keep the speaker community, no matter where you are on the ladder, to keep you connected and keep you educated. So you rarely know how someone is receiving your talk by their body language. Yeah, I totally thought she hated me. thought she wanted to throw mud pies at me. She just thought it was the greatest thing in the world after that. But she was like... Oh, I don't wow. focus on the drillers anymore. I look above. I've been on stage forever. I'm a, I'm an actress. I've done all that. I went to school for theater. And I was a television reporter forever. I just look above everybody's head. Except the, the <laughs> engaged faces, those ones. I stay with them, boy. Oh, you know, yeah. I, oh, play yeah. Off those. oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I, I had to get braces years ago. Three, four years ago, I got braces. And then I had to speak at a dental <laughs> convention. And the whole full show I spit on. I was like, I am so sorry. Because you're over and that you right, you learn how to over enunciate, so it comes across the mic. And there's just like I'm watching the spittle with the mic, and I'm like, I'm sorry to the first front row, but I'm not sick. I don't have hepatitis. I'm great. I'm going to call you out. Don't don't walk out of my talk. Don't walk out of my speech. Don't walk don't out, walk out man. man. Just move a seat. <laughs> move a row behind. Ladies, this was an absolute proud Bring pleasure. I, I really appreciate you giving me your time and giving all of us your time. I will continue to share this because it's being recorded. Um, and the, the visuals will continue. People will still continue to watch. I think this is hugely valuable. So I had a ball. This yeah, me awesome. too. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, thank, thank, thank you, you everybody girl. here. And everybody we'll here. see you guys next time in Cyberland. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>